The game was invented in England around the 20th century and was originally called ping pong. The name table tennis was adopted in 1921, 22, around there, when the old ping pong association was formed in 1902, when it was revived, then they renamed it to table tennis. The ITTF, which stands for International Table Tennis Federation, was founded in 1926. The founding members being England, Sweden, Hungary, India, Denmark, Germany, Czechoslovakia, Austria, and Wales. By the mid 90s, more than 165 national associations were members. The first world championships were held in London in 1926. By the mid 90s, more than, right, I said that already, da da da. All right. So from 1926, until 1939, the game was dominated by players from Central Europe. In the mid 1950s, Asia emerged as the breeding ground of champions. And from that time, the event has been won by either Japan or China. Table tennis became an Olympic sport in 1988 with singles and doubles competition for men and women. All right. We can go on to the, to the, the next um, slide. The game used to go to 21. It was two best of three games at 21. But it has changed since then, and we now go to 11. Uh, three best of five games to 11. They did this to uh, encourage more crowd support, to make the game more exciting. And they also increase the size of the ball. The ball used to be 38 millimeters in diameter and it's now 40 plus. So a bigger ball means a slower ball and the, the speed, all right, is also slower. So a few things to know. Table tennis has been Olympic sport since 1988. Right. The ITTF has over 200 member and more than 100 countries participate at World Junior. 180 miles per hour and spin it at 150 revolutions per second. Table tennis is now the national sport of China with over 20 million registered players. I think it now stands at 23 million since this was written. Professional leagues exist in many countries, including Germany, Japan, France, Sweden, China, Austria, South Korea, and Italy, where you can go and play table tennis and get paid for playing table tennis. All right. So the ITTF has a pro tour covering most of the continent and a global junior program that includes world junior circuit, world junior championships, and a world cadet challenge, which we had one here in 2014. And all of this information you can get at www.ittf.com, all right? Okay, so moving on. So what do we need? Uh, in terms of equipment, if you're starting a program. Now, when we are saying starting a program, at this level, it's recreational, maybe community uh, project in a community center, at your school, or even at home, rec recreational. All right. So the, the rail size, the actual size of a table tennis board measures nine by five feet. Or if you want it in meters, it's 2.74 meters long and 1.525 meters wide, all right? The height is 76 centimeters. But in table tennis, when you wanna play, any table is a table tennis table, all right? And it could be smaller or bigger, but so long the ball can bounce on it, you can play on it, all right? 
the real measurement of a net is six feet long. So it extends over the, the side of the table. All right, and is six inches high or 15.25 centimeters. All right, so if, uh, if you're at your school, you wanna start a program, you can get maybe a sheet of plywood. Um, if you go to the lumber store and you, you say you want it for a table tennis board, they will know the thickness. I think it's about five eighths that you would need so that the ball has a, a good bounce. All right, a sheet of plywood though normally comes in a size eight by four unless you specifically order, you know, nine by five, all right? Then what you can do is paint it either green or a dark blue. Uh, the reason for the color is that, so you can see the ball. Balls come in two colors, white and orange, all right? So it's, it's easier to pick up the ball on the darker colors. And the international standard is blue and green, all right? You're gonna need some rackets. Um, minimum of four rackets in case, you know, you play doubles or, but more the better. If you can get 20 rackets and 20, you have 20 children and each one can have a racket, that's, that's great, that's perfect. All right, at least 10 balls to start. Obviously more the better. All right, I've played um, at schools on desks. You know, I put like six normal desks together and put a wood or a book or something across that you have something in the center that you can play you can play on that all right so if that's where you want to start if that's the only way you can start then you can do that all right that's a low thing um you want to have enough space around the board the international requirements uh, for for space are is about 20 by 40 feet they are specific uh, lengths for different tournaments. Um, Olympic size is 46 by 23 feet, which is quite large. And uh, at world championships, for example, you could have up to 16 boards in one hall. So you can imagine the size of that, that room. That's going to be huge. And uh, local tournaments, you can have uh, 30 by 16 feet, National League, 33 by 16. So if you're starting something in a community center or at school, then you, you may not have that much space, all right? It, it may be a room, maybe a space in the pavilion, all right? You just wanna clear as much space as possible and make sure that when the person is swinging their hand, they're not gonna hit into anything. And that is, is clear enough that they have enough room like, to run back you know, to play a shot, all right? So let's get started, let's, let's move on. Um, when you, <clears throat> before you start, you wanna have some rules <clears throat> for that facility. Um, if you are gonna get a real board, um, I check locally, you can get one from about $1,300 and up, all right, a real board. And you want to have some rules because if you're not present and the children maybe get there before you, they're going to want to play, they want to put up the board. So they need to know how to put it up because some boards, they have um, like security features and levers. And if they don't know and they pull it down, they could injure themselves or they could destroy the board. All right, uh, which is the case in most schools because you know, the boards are just, have just been destroyed because they haven't been stored properly and the children want to play and they just pull them down however they feel fit. All right, you want to collect some information <clears throat> in terms of your players, like their ages, contact information, date of birth. If you're going to do like a pre-registration, like, like, like camp, for example, you normally have you know, this, this registration process and you would have all their information on a form and they can fill it out, you know. Um, you wanna have a secure environment uh, so that you're gonna prevent, you'll be able to prevent injuries from happening, all right? Um, look for like cracks in the floor or loose floorboards. You wanna correct those areas if possible. Um, sometimes, 
a building may have like nails protruding from the wall or if it's a wooden building and you want to just check and make sure that everything is safe all right make sure that you have uh, liquids available and toilet and changing facilities all right you want to um, inform them uh, of their clothing it should be comfortable and um, they should wear sneakers all right safety first all right so what comes next planning know your group like i said before uh, the pre-registration is helpful uh, to know their levels uh, if they are a beginner if they play before um, you know maybe they played at church and they have a little uh, understanding and a little bit more skill as the others and when you know everyone in the group sometimes you have to break the group down into more groups uh, in order to cater to everyone's needs all right all right so let's move right on so what we're going to do now is uh, a first lesson all right so everything here is going to be done in this first lesson all right so the first thing you need to look at after introducing everyone everyone's happy and and, and relax the first thing you always look at is the grip how to hold the racket all right there are two ways to hold the racket either shake hand or pinhole right shake hand is the one that we teach in in this country and most of the caribbean uh pinhole you normally see it in asia and you know a few individual players in other places would, would hold it uh, pinhole style but the majority of players play shake hand so shake hand is like shaking hands with the racket that's how we describe it all right um the Finger and thumb across the racket. The three fingers come around the handle. All right, so it's just like shaking hands with the racket. What we do when when people uh, when players don't understand, we, we rest the racket on the table with the handle extending. All right, and then we say, pick it up and put your finger on the, on the rubber. If the black finger is up, you say. Put the other fingers around and pick it up and they normally do it correctly all right and then you just have to check that the forefinger is uh as as uh, away from the rubber as possible like not across the rubber because later when they go to play backhand that forefinger is going to be in the way and you have to make that adjustment so it's easier when they do it right from the beginning all right it's like holding a pen if you hold your pen you will see you use the same fingers across the top and the other three go behind, right? right. Moving on. So after everyone knows the grip, right, something called bouncers, all right? It's getting familiar with the ball and using the grip correctly. And that's something you're gonna uh, be doing throughout this lesson. It's just checking that they're holding the racket correctly, all right? So bouncers can be done in a variety of ways. You can have a card that um, you have certain targets to get to, or you have certain uh, ways to do the bouncers, like forehand, uh, how many you can get, as many as you can get forehand on the forehand side, and then on the backhand side, as many as you can get, uh, bouncing it on the ground, you know, with the forehand side and then backhand side, so if you have a card, they'd be able to do it themselves and say, okay, I got 20 in the forehand, you know, and 40 in the backhand. And then the next time they come back, you know, they can do it again and try to beat their score. All right, that's one way you can do it. Or you can do it like a big competition and maybe have five of them at once going together and the winner, you know, will advance then to the next round. So there, there are a number of ways you can do that. Um, some some students find it difficult um, for whatever reason maybe they don't get to go outside much or you know they don't get to play sports much so they may only get one or two and for those individuals you just encourage them to beat whatever they make if they make one 
then you say, okay, let's try to get two, all right? And for them, that's a success, all right? So don't, don't expect everyone to, to get 20 the first time. It will not happen, all right? So make sure that everyone is, is progressing and everyone is having fun. So we, we're gonna move on now to the next activity in this lesson. And that is, we're gonna do some relays now because they're, they're young children you're dealing with and you know they just wanna move and be active and have fun. And you can variate the relays um, in terms of what bouncers you do, uh, the distance, um, depending on how many players you have. So let's say you have uh, nine people uh, you're going to do three, three in a line, all right, three each, and they go to maybe a cone or the wall or whatever, um, you know, uh, whatever you're, you can go to, or a cone maybe, so, and the first, first time around, you're going to do four hand bouncers up, you're going to go down around the cone, come back, and you pass off the ball. So each player may have a racket. If that's not possible, then the person in the front will start with a racket and a ball, and they will bounce, go around the cone, come back, and then hand off the ball to the next person. And you can tell when, when they're finished, they can sit. So you know when everybody's sitting in that line, then we have a winner, all right? And then you can add then the next round. You say, oh, you want to do it again? Let's, let's, do, uh, let's do it with the backhand side now, all right? And if they, they're, they're still keen and they can do uh, bouncing on the ground or they can do switching, you know, the number of variations you can do. Um, if, if they're really advanced, then you can add another ball in a non-playing hand, all right? So they're, they're hitting with one hand and they're throwing up the ball with the other. So that, that is taxing and that, take, that requires some skill, all right? So... The next activity following the relay, we're getting in now to some footwork. So, so far we've, we've covered the grip, all right? And uh, we've, 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 we've seen now how coordinated they are uh, with the ball and you know how they can manage things like that. We're not on the board yet, all right? Uh, we're gonna do some mirror footwork, which is just basic moving to the right and left, lateral movement, all right? So it's, feet together, feet apart. Um, and you can, you can uh, show the ready position in this case, uh, which is racket in front, um, leaning slightly forward, feet shoulder distance apart, all right? And what they're doing here, one person is trying to get away from the other. The other person will try to follow wherever they go left or right. You know, it's very basic, all right? You do that a few times and you switch. All right, so that they get just a basic idea of how to move, uh, how to move with their feet around the table from side to side. All right. So now we go on, we go to the table now, and we are doing some basic, very basic hitting in the forehand and backhand. It's not a stroke. We're not saying it's a drive. We're not saying it's a push. Nothing like that. We're just hitting the ball. Um, basic instructions for the forehand from ready position, which we would have done just now in mirror footwork, all right? We are gonna go from ready position, back, back swing, forward contact, and then follow through, all right? Those are the instructions, the four instructions. Ready position, back swing, forward movement, and follow through, all right? Now, sometimes in some cases, some children will hit the ball in the net, all right? Or they will hit it too hard or uh, they'll miss it completely, all right? A number of things happen at this stage. Now, if, when, when everyone has a turn, then you ask them the question, uh, if my ball is going into the net, you know, if I lean the racket down, where will the ball go? All right, and then they, they say, oh, it's gonna go down, right? I say, okay, it's gonna go into the net. Right now, if it's leaning up and you hit it maybe too hard, where will the ball go? You know, it will go off the table or up in the air. All right. So 
then they realize, okay, I have to keep my racket straight. All right, but to get it over the net, you have to go a little bit up. So you're gonna go forward and up. And then you give them a turn again. And you know, the, the ones that were not getting it may get it this time. All right. Um, but just not not technical or, or no, no, not too much information. You just wanna get them to get the ball over the net. All right. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the bat hand. Um, very little instruction again. Uh, you tell them for right-handers, you're gonna take the ball from the left hip with a straight racket, forward and up, all right? You're not focusing too much now on footwork or, you know, you can do a parallel stance at this stage, all right? Because you just want them to hit the ball over the net, all right? You can tell them if they're missing the ball, tell them you wanna watch the ball until it hits your racket. Try to watch it until it hits the center of the racket. All right, right. So you give them some turns with that. And then you move on, then we move on to service. All right, so they're learning so much in this first lesson. All right, but it's still very basic. So basic service at this stage, we just say um, straight onto the racket, ball straight onto the racket forward and down, all right? That it hits once on your side, clears the net and hits on the other side, all right? Everybody's not gonna get it the first thing, all right? They're gonna maybe give it too much down and not enough forward or too much forward and not enough down, all right? Or they're gonna bounce it first. Some, some children actually do that. And you say, oh, it's so easy, but for them and, and getting it in their mind to the ball, to the racket is something else, all right? So even at the end, everybody has a turn to serve and then return to serve as well, all right? And they're still not getting it, then you can allow them for the next activity to just bounce it on the table and hit it over for the first lesson, all right? So we're moving on now to activity six which is called Beat the Champ, all right? So this is a culmination now of everything we've already done. And this is where they get to have some fun. By now they know how to hold a racket. They know how to hit the ball. They know how to serve, how to return serve, how to move from left to right, all right? And they're ready now to play games because they they will want to play games from the very beginning. All right? And what we're gonna do is just play one point. So we have a line on the side of the table, a little distance away that nobody gets hurt. The champ is gonna be on one side, all right? And the player trying to beat the champ on the other side. And this side will start serving all the time. The person that's trying to beat the champ, all right? So they serve one serve, play one point. And if the, the player that serve wins the point, they replace the champ. Is that clear to everybody? All right, so that's why we call it beat the champ. So if the champ wins, they stay, they play again. And then the non-champ will go to the back of the line and the next one will rotate into that position. Is that clear for everybody? All right, if you have less players, you can play more points, all right? You can uh, vary it according to how many players you have, all right? And a new player always serves, okay? So next one. So you always wanna include fun in your lesson, all right? Um, there should be plenty of activity, so, so activity, so as many people doing something as possible. You don't want people waiting around and, you know, what, because they're gonna be itching to just go and do something, all right? So make the, <clears throat> make the explanations short and then quickly they go into action, all right? When you are planning a lesson, choose a topic, all right? This is what I want to cover today. So for the next lesson, Let's say we're gonna do forehand drive. We're gonna go into the strokes now, 
you're going to say 400 and your lesson will be built around 400 so that at the end of the lesson you know what you've achieved all right um something that's called kiss k-i-s keep it simple all right the more simple it is the the faster they get into action and then the less they have to think about it you know they can just do it then all right now at this stage i'm going to take some questions and then we can move on to the possibilities of the next lesson if there are any questions at this stage chat for you okay everyone yes i have a question um miss young is yes please right for the game of the champ why the champ stay on all the time because he won <laughs> okay when so i was thinking in my mind so the ones who are weak and many more practice right but with one, with one point Dava, uh, uh, Dava. Level. but in the case where you find you have players that are much better then you may need a second board and you separate then the better ones on that side and then you know i keep the weaker ones on one side but normally okay. it stays on for about three three points and then moves on okay thank you I think you're you're um, you're muted, Julia. Sorry about that. Right. So a question in the chat: uh, Are these steps the same uh, for secondary school level or intermediate level? Um, you can do similar things. I mean, if they are beginners, you have to go through that process of teaching them the grip. You may not want to spend so much time on the bouncers because that's like maybe for five to eight year olds. Um, but, and then you may want to move in more to the technical stuff, uh, the older they are, but you still want to leave that fun element. Uh, maybe in your warm up, you can have like a game of tag or the relays, they still have fun doing that. No matter if they're 12, 14, they still like doing the relays. Um, you can warm up more, uh, like do more exercises and stuff with the older children. Um, but the same processes have to be learned. The, uh, the grip, ready position, movement, service, return of service, and then you move into these strokes and forehand drive, backhand drive, uh, forehand push, backhand push, forehand topspin, backhand topspin, um, and then combinations of those. So it is a little more advanced, but we, we, we will get to that in the second lesson. Hope that answers that person's question. Okay, we're ready for the second question comes over the chat. Um, what would be an ideal starting age? Okay, uh, in table tennis, you can start at any age. I've seen two year olds, but due to the height of the table, uh, if you're not able to adjust that height, then six is probably the youngest that we normally go, six years old, because of the height of the table. If not, they're going to be like this plane instead of this. You know, their, their hands are going to be above their heads instead of at the side where they should be. Um, I've seen uh, coaches take two-year-olds and put them actually on the table, and they play from the table. So you can start from the time you hold a racket, but we normally start from about six, six to eight years old because of the height of the table. I, I needed to say the question. Huh? 
the 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 um, you can get uh, equipment. I normally get my equipment from megaspin.net. Uh, that's an online store where you get uh, items in bulk, balls, uh, rackets. Um, if, you, if you want, you can ask the Barbados Table Tennis Association if they have any rackets available. Sometimes they do rackets and balls that you can start a program. Um, Sports and games may have, uh, Woolworth may have like a starter, a starter kit, but it's, it's best if you can, if you have uh, a person maybe in the States that you can order on megaspin.net, you get uh, equipment there at a good price for anyone who's interested in getting equipment. All right. Any other questions? If not, we move on. I don't think there are any more All right. So <clears throat> the next lesson for the beginner stage will depend on your group, your group dy dynamic, um, how uh, even the players are, uh, how they progress in, in the, the first uh, items that were done. If they were getting the bouncers done, if they were hitting the ball on the table at all, if they were getting the serve done. So some of those things may have to be revised. Um, I have one more question before you move off in the chat. This is from- Okay, Ms. one Ali. more question. How do you deal with hand-eye coordination? Okay, uh, the question is, how do you deal with hand-eye coordination? Now, um, the bouncers, in themselves uh, will assist with hand-eye coordination. Uh, a good sport uh, for, for hand-eye coordination is table tennis. Um, if they are not getting the bouncers done, like hitting the ball up in the air, they can start by balancing, balancing the ball, all right? If that's too difficult, they can start by just throwing the ball up and catching it, all right? If that's too difficult, they can sit on the floor again, close to a wall and hit it against the wall with a racket, all right? A few times. Um, but it, over, through time, they get it done. Like I said, if, if you can only get one done, then you try for two. It's just like any sport. If you're doing football and you start to juggle the ball, you start with one on the knee and then two until you can go down on your foot and you can get one done and two done. Mm -hmm. You know, so they learn by, by failing, by error and uh, they improve over time. So just give them time. All right. So as I was saying, the next lesson depends on how the first one went. So let's say everything went well in the first lesson. Now we're gonna move on to the strokes, all right? So let's say we're doing the forehand drive, all right? You start now by making sure that the footwork and the stance is in order. In the forehand drive, you wanna have your right foot a little bit behind, all right? You're turning to your right for right-handers from ready position back, back swing, forward, contact, forward and up. The follow through is very important. You wanna finish above your head, all right? So back, forward and up. And you just repeat that as many times as possible, all right? Um, and then you can add to that some movement, all right? When everybody's getting it done. How we do this, we feed, we can feed. There are a number of ways you can do it. You can feed the ball balls from a basket from close to the net and you bounce it 
they are on the right side of the table. All right, you're bouncing it to them and they're hitting it back over the net cross court back to you or on the other side. All right, and they can do that from the backhand side, playing forehand as well. So you just try to variate where they're playing from or where they're playing to. All right, keep, keep changing so that they don't get bored. All right, um, you can add some movement to it. All right, if they're getting that done, then you can do on the same day the backhand, the backhand drive. All right, so um, at the end of that lesson now, they can do a forehand game cross court. So you're only playing on the forehand side. All right, or they can do uh, bounce the ball themselves and hit it over uh, as uh, maybe how many they can get out of 10. All right, so that's the basic level. All right, and then the next lesson then you can do a combination and you can add some movement, all right? So in all you have to, to get through for the beginners, uh, backhand push, forehand push, service, uh, you would move on to a, a legal service where, where you have to throw the ball in the air, six inches from a still palm, um, you contact the ball that it hits once on your side, clear the net over. Um, you have to throw the ball straight up, uh, not throwing it forward or back, straight up in the air. And you start from behind the line of the table and above the line. All right. Uh, a knowledge of table tennis is obviously required to coach. Uh, if you need more information, uh, the Barbados Table Tennis Association uh, had some manuals available. And if they don't have them available, they can get some ordered if you require uh, a manual. The manual, the, the education in ITTF is quite uh, efficient. Uh, you can go to the ITTF website. That's www.ittf.com. And you can order a manual or you can even go and do a level one course. They are done all over the world, you know, and um, it's a good thing. If there are enough people in Barbados, we can get one set up to be done here that you can do a level one table tennis course. All right. So if there are any questions. Yes, one question there. Is there a particular order in which strokes are taught? Um, is, is it a particular stroke you start with? All right, the question is, is there a particular order in which you teach uh, the table tennis strokes? Um, there's no set order, but we normally start with the forehand drive. Then we go to the backhand drive, and then we can do either backhand push or forehand push. And then we combine those four. And then we start after they understand that the backhand push creates backspin. We start then teaching top spin on the forehand side. And we combine backhand push, which is backspin. And we combine that with forehand top spin. All right. Um, there's no you know, real order, but those are the basic uh, techniques that have to be taught. Uh, we also teach or introduce rules at this stage, uh, beginner stage. Um, as we play the games and maybe the ball touches the net, you know, you introduce net ball, which is when you serve and the ball touches the net and goes over, then the, the serve, it has to be redone. All right, nobody earns the point. Um, edge ball, sometimes the ball edges the table. It is a point, all right? Um, and how you win a point, how you lose a point, uh, as you play the games, you will introduce the rules, all right? Uh, each player receives two serves, all right? As I said, the game goes to 11, uh, two serves. That if the game reaches 10 all, you alternate serves. So one serve each until one player uh, is two points clear. All right.
The uh, ITTF rules are also available on the website that you can have a look at all the rules. Um, you don't have to be a professional player or a really good player to be a coach. You just have to have the knowledge of the game and a way to demonstrate. So if you can't demonstrate yourself, then you need to get someone who can demonstrate for you, maybe one of the better players or uh, another player from a, a club or to come by and just demonstrate or a fellow coach to come and, and demonstrate. Or you can use videos. Um, a good site for videos is Ping Skills, P I N G S K I L L S dot com. And anything that you're going to be teaching on that day, they would have a video off. So, if, say we want to teach um, the service, then you can go and download that video and have that for your lesson. All right. Any, any forehand push, anything, you can take a look at that and get an idea of of how to demonstrate that skill. All right, so if there are no more questions. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed this session. And if you are interested in starting a program at your church, community center, uh, school at home, then you can get uh, in contact with me or one of the other coaches. Uh, if you need some assistance in, in any way, you can get in contact with me and uh, we will help you out. All right. Thank you so much for listening in and continue to be safe and have fun. All right.